And so you are still live on Footy Fanatics on Star FM, and of course, also on GH1 TV. We are streaming live wherever it is you're watching us and listening to us also on Facebook. Like I told you, today we have a special guest with us with whom we're going to be chatting today on our show. Now, he is not a mean person. He's well-traveled on the whole of Europe. He's traveled to the U.S. as well to play football. He's played for the Black Stars on several occasions. He is a World Cup winner, and he is our very own guest today on the show. So let me run by you a few things you need to know about this gentleman. In 2009, when Ghana began our quest at the U20 level, first of all with the African Championship, he was key in there for Ghana. Then to the World Cup itself, where Ghana made history by becoming the first nation in Africa to win the U20 World Cup when the Black Satellites went all out there and against Brazil in that grand finale, Ghana won against them on penalties. In fact, he scored one of the penalties on that particular day. From there, he also went on to play for the Black Stars. The following year, at the Nations Cup in Angola, where Ghana finished second, losing out to Egypt in a grand finale in Angola. Five years on from there again, he was at the Nations Cup again, where Ghana came in second with a silver medal again. He was involved in there for Ghana. Talk about the Mundial itself, the World Cup. He's been there two times for the Black Stars of Ghana. So he's well-traveled. He knows everything there is, there is you need to know about Ghana football. Let me also add that he played for the Porcupine Warriors here in Ghana. And that should tell you, or give you an idea of who I'm talking about today, or who our guest is today, is our very own Samuel Inkum. He's our guest today on the show. Sammy, good to have you join us. A pleasure. And you all come on to the show today. Thank you, my brother. How, how is life? How has everything been going on for you? Yeah, first of all, I have to say a big thank you to you. And uh, you, you guys are doing amazing, especially you are doing an amazing job. Uh, in terms of football, you are letting everybody to know what we are doing outside there. Mm. The journey is not easy, but um, still we are on it. We thank God that we are still alive and we are still have the energy to play. Hmm. Amazing. I, I, I need to run by you your career. And I'm sure that is something that from Sengedi Azankest, yeah. first of all, then to the fabulous side in Kumasi Kotoko, yeah. they left the shores of Ghana, went mm. to Swiss mm. with FC Basel. Mm. Then I remember the move to Ukraine yes. with Dnipro. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Dnipro. I want to begin from Dnipro and Ro Ukraine because mm. of the happenings currently in that country. As a player who has played in Ukraine in the past, I think you spent about two or three years in that country. I think uh, three and a half years. Three and a half if years. I'm not wrong, yeah. How do you feel knowing that there's some bit of a war of a sort in a country being waited by Russia and Ukraine? Yeah, Ukraine is one of the lovely country. Uh, when I was there, I was enjoying, you know. When I was, my time being there, the same thing happened, but it didn't... Be, it wasn't that massive. Yes, yes. Mm. I think uh, it was, uh, our, I think, our team present against something about politics, which okay. I don't know. So okay. I was also scared when I was there as well. Me and my family was there mm. at, at, at a point in time. Mm. So, and the thing happened when my family was there. So um, we were all panicking, but uh, we thank God that nothing serious happened to me and my family. But uh, what is happening at the moment is some, it's sad. It's very sad, you know. Uh, Ukrainians also love football very much. And uh, look at what is happening. Mm. Football, every country now love football. So even the, the football is a thing that they use it to entertain themselves. And now look at what is happening. They are not playing football again. People are dying. If we check the news, it's so sad. I don't want to even talk about it because if I talk about it, maybe I will cry. Mm. But... Uh, uh, we are praying that things will work out for them. I'm, I'm just begging the leaders, they have to put uh, some structures in, the place, in place so that uh, we will all be happy. Mm. I, I spoke to a, a Ghanaian player who plays uh, in uh, Ukraine with a club known as Portova, yeah. if I got the name right anyway. Yeah. Uh, he is currently in Ukraine. And mm. he, at the time, the mm. war had just begun and they were at home, not sure of what, is, what was going to happen. Talking about mm. uh, Najib Yakubu, mm. who played for the Ghana Youth 17 team in 2017, mm. but now in Ukraine. Fortunately, mm. two days ago, I spoke to him and he says they've managed to cross the border mm. by road and they are in Hungary. So I can imagine, I'm sure you can imagine mm. how yes, it feels yes. like to be caught yeah. up yes. in this mess in Ukraine now. Yeah, that is why I said that uh, he watched a, what a lovely talent I, mm. I was following him also okay. okay he's very good player he has he has the potential as well uh, what is happening at the moment 
if I sit down here, I will cry, to be mm. honest. Mm. So I don't want to talk too much about it. I believe that uh, we all have to pray to God that uh, something better will, will, leaders will put some, some, uh, some structures there and uh, things will, this war and stuff will go. Because we don't want we don't want any third war yeah, to come again. Yeah. So we can't afford to have any world no, war. No, 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 we can't again. afford. Let me run by you, and I want to ask you this interesting question. Mm. You've played in several countries mm. in Europe and also in Americas, mm. uh, from Switzerland to Ukraine. Yeah. You've been to France. You've yeah. been to Greece. Mm. You've played in Georgia. Yeah. You've been to Portugal as yeah, well, yeah. and then the US and all that. Which of these countries would you say? you have the most wonderful memories when you were playing your football in those countries? Yeah, all the countries I was enjoying. Mm. And um, one of the countries that when I went there, it was Switzerland when I was in FC Basel mm. because mm. Uh, I was playing Champions League, I was playing Europa League as well, and the fans are amazing. Mm. The owner of the club at that time was, I don't know, she so at that time she was the president. Okay. She she is so special. She's special. Mm. Let me put it that way. Mm. Because he treat me, he treat me and my family. She always want us to feel at home. So um, I would say Switzerland. But don't get me wrong. Every country I went to, it was so lovely. It was lovely. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the Black Stars. And yeah. today I will take you around. Yeah. All the places you played your football. The Black Stars, yeah. uh, your debut after that, U20, U20 yeah. a World Cup uh, where Ghana won, and then the Black Stars, I remember when managed by Milovan Rajevac, mm. you invited yourself and other players who were in the U20 squad that won the World Cup mm. uh, to the Black Stars for the tournament in Angola. I don't know if you've ever shared this particular story before, but mm. what was the mood like for you when Samuel Lincoln's name came up as a player being considered, it was given a call up to come join the Black Stars for the Nations Cup in Angola. To be honest, I was so happy because, uh, you know, I was in Windy, uh, Windy Professionals in mm -hmm. Winneba. Mm -hmm. So anytime Black Stars would come to Winneba as for camping, every time it was my dream to play for Black Stars. Mm -hmm. I used to go to Samuel Sekufo, Stephen Apea, Lai Kinson, John Mensah, John Pinter, Asamoja, and Derek Boy. I used to go to them mm. for advice. You know, Sule Mutali, Michael Asien. So when I was, when they first called me in Blasters, to be honest, I, I, I didn't sleep at that time. <laughs> but you know what? You know, when you, are, when, you are, when you are doing a good job, you know, everybody will wish you well. So when the call-up came, I spoke to my mom because that is something that I spoke to my mom long time ago. Okay. I want to help my country in terms of football. Mm -hmm. So I was so excited to be there. And uh, I didn't go there because I, I'm Samuel Lincoln. I went, there, I went there because of my hard working. And when I went there, I also proved it. So I was so excited to be there. Hmm. And obviously, it was a good moment for you with a career uh, with the Black Stars. The first time you were there, Ghana went on to win silver medal, even yeah. though we lost to Egypt in the grand finale. I remember that particular goal that was scored late on in the game. Hmm. Uh, that led to, to us not winning it. But walk us through that moment when that player, hmm. uh, Gedo, if I call the name right, ran from that side yeah. and kicked the ball in with just about some nine or so minutes to end the game. Yeah. What ran through your head at that moment? I think every every player on the pitch, when the goal came, every player on the pitch, we were so down mm. because we thought that um, it would be uh, extra time. And look at the time he scored the goal. It very was late. <laughs> very very. We, we can't do nothing. But that is football. Football is like that. Uh, either you win, you draw, or you lose. Mm. We were in, you know, in that position for us to lose because if you see the tournament, we were amazing in that tournament. Yeah. But that's football. Mm. You cannot do nothing. And in that particular squad, I mean, most of the senior players were mm. absent mm. for one reason or the other. Stephen Apia was absent. Yeah. Michael Isian got injured in the first game yeah. and so had to leave. There was no uh, Sule Montari. So mm. it was yourself, Kujua Samoa, who was, Kujua Samoa, Samoa Jan, yeah. were about the senior most players Did in that, the, was there. the day. Together with yourself, mm, were in there. Size, you at that tournament, mm. when you guys went for that tournament, mm. was there that belief that you could go all the way to the final like, we, like it happened? I think when we were going to the tournament, there was a hope. 
to be honest, you know, the, because the squad that we went to that tournament, it was only Steven Appiah who was uh, absent. Absent. Mm. But Michael was with was the, the team, team, so mm. you can see the atmosphere. Everything was going well. Ghanaians also trust the team. But when Michael got injured, a little bit shaking came to the camp because uh, we saw and everybody hear the sound of the injury. Mm. So we were all also panicking when we were training, you know. Mm. So. Uh, but uh, like you said, it was not a uh, squad that uh, we were favorite. But that is football. Football, I keep on saying, there's a lot of surprises in football. And we went there, nobody believed that we can even be in the final. Mm. And uh, that's what happened. We'll continue with our chat with uh, Black Stars player Samuel Linkum after this. So you all come back still live on our chat with uh, Black Stars player Samuel Inkum live in here with us speaking about a number of things to do with his career, the Black Stars and every other thing, football or sports. We'll talk about all of them today on the show. So let's get back to our chat mm. with uh, Samuel Inkum. Sam, you were making, you were talking before we went for the break on the Black Stars mm. 2010 Nations Cup and our exploits at that championship. Let's move on to the World Cup the same year in 2010. And again, Ghana made history, joining the likes of Senegal and Cameroon as the only African sides to get to the quarterfinals. And in fact, for us, we were just on the, on the, on the, on the verge of qualifying for the semi-final when, unfortunately, we couldn't make it against the Uruguay. Does that name and the memory of that game bring you some level of emotions? Still. Yes, yeah, still. 12 years on. Yes, yeah, still. Because uh, for me, we did very well. We did very well in that, in that tournament. It's got to a time that uh, the whole continent, you know, they are all supporting Ghana. And um, I remember before, I think before the semifinals, May you so rest in perfect peace. The late Nelson Mandela invited mm, us yeah. in his uh, house because we were making Africa proud. Yeah. So um, that shows that we are doing very well. It's very unfortunate that we couldn't, um, we couldn't get the result that we want against Uruguay, but uh, that is football. You know, football, anything can happen. And um, yeah, we went there to, uh, you know, first of all, a lot of, uh, a lot of players, World Cup is the highest in, in, in our football, you know. So when you are there, you have to be proud of yourself. Second, you have to make your country proud. The value of your, yourself will go also up as a player. Mm. So when you are in the World Cup, it's different. It's different atmosphere. Mm. So um, yes, this is what happened there. Everybody was excited, but uh, also the result we couldn't get against Uruguay bring a lot of, you know. But at the end of the day, that's football. When you wake up and that image. Mm of that ball hitting the upright yeah. from a Samoyan's penalty yeah. and going out. Yeah. When you wake up and you see that image anywhere, whether yeah. on YouTube or anywhere, what does that do to you? Nothing. <laughs> For me, nothing. But mm. that's what I'm saying, that the result we wanted, we couldn't get it. Mm. So definitely you are going to be sad. I'm a human as well. Mm. And uh, everybody know the, how the game went. And don't forget, a Samoyan is our main penalty. 
He's Take the out. one. Yeah. He's taking the penalty. He scored against Serbia, if I'm not wrong. He yeah. scored against, I think, uh, Austria. If yeah. he, against, mm. I think, US, he scored. Yeah. Even the yeah. same game, he scored when mm. doing the penalties. One of the penalties yeah. And uh, Samojan is one of the great strikers we have. You know, so um, I was, even the team was not so. We were sad, but not to the extent that um, we, we don't understand each other. Mm. We just let it go because I don't, they, we all learn something from okay. it. So uh, what happened? Anytime I see, I say, oh, we could have been in the final. Yeah. But it didn't is, happen. It didn't happen. It was meant that to is, happen that way. Yeah, that is football. Anyway, let's talk about the Black Stars a bit more. The last time was the Nations Cup. Yeah. I'm fast forwarding now to yeah. the recent Nations Cup. You know, Ghana went to in the Cameroon. Unfortunately, after the group matches, our Black Stars could not progress. And, you know, what really do you think went wrong? with the Black Stars at the last Nations Cup in Cameroon? I think I believe that uh, any player that who wear national team jersey, not only Black Stars, national team jersey, you have to know that you are representing your country. First, your country. Second, yourself. Mm. So I would just give advice to the, the play, any player that they will call him to the national team, that he have to know that Ghanaians are expecting more because we are in a country that we are football nation. We love football. Mm. You know, so anytime you put the jerseys, the colors, you're supposed to know that uh, you are representing and you're supposed to count yourself lucky as well because mm. we are about, if I'm not wrong, I have four now, maybe 35 million. I have mm. four now, so mm. you never know. So this is what I'm saying. Anytime you put the colors, you have to know that uh, you are representing the country and you're supposed to count yourself lucky mm. as well so i would just give that advice to anyone that they will call to the national uh national games or national call up you have to be you have to be lucky for yourselves so like the way you are saying i think it's uh it's uh, it's also a dream for every player to play for a national team mm. they went to the cup of nations football is all about teamwork mm. And when you are in a when you are in a team, and you, you see that this player is even better than me, it will let you wake up, mm. do extra. Mm. But if you check the team that we're having, we have a good team. Don't get me wrong, but they're supposed to be like competition in the team. Mm. You're supposed to take a player at the same level. If okay. this one is not there, okay. this one can play. If okay. you check, two thousand and nine. 2010, 2014, up to now, I'm not the one supposed to tell you. Mm. You yourself, you can so, see. So is there some level of drop overall in the quality of players we take Yeah, to we're in? supposed to have uh, challenges in the team. Okay. Why is it that if before you get a good team, you have to have competition in the team? Mm. But if you don't have competition in the team, I know that I don't the day Sam Olinkuma will play. So I will not do extra. So you put in any extra. I will not man. put any extra. But if mm. I see that at... At our time, John Penty was there, I was there, Harris Nafu came, mm. Daniel Opari came, mm. and look this squad. You yeah. cannot sleep. Mm. That's interesting. You have to but I look at I look at the right back, like I say. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned four strong four, names. Four strong names. For just the right back. For only position. the right back. If I look at the current squad. Yeah. You, you, you will be the better position to answer your question. Interesting well. <laughs> point made there by Samuel Linkum on yeah, the quality yeah, of players we have yeah. and some competition in positions for our national team, the Black Stars, yeah. that we need to be uh, looking yeah. at. Samuel, are you still available for the Black Stars? Listen, I'm still playing. Mm. And uh, if any coach come and said, Sammy, this is what, this is how we want you to play and come. I'm from Ghana, I'm a Ghanaian. I will never turn my back mm. because that is the soil I'm from. Mm. There's nothing that I will turn my back for Ghana. But I'm just saying that everything depends on the coach, the mm. tactics, and his gameplay. Mm. So I'm still playing. So anytime they will call me, why not? So you have not retired from national team football. You no. are available. No. no. Mm. Anytime. Anytime. Ghana versus Nigeria that's is what, Ghana versus Nigeria is not going to be possible because I don't have club at the moment. Okay. And I have to be sincere to myself, you okay. know. So because 
they call based on what you are doing in your club. Okay. Even though I just finished my contract in somewhere December, hmm. which was 2021. Yeah. So, but uh, at the end of the day, this game that we are going to play against Nigeria is a game that uh, you have to be playing games active before you can come to the national team. So, okay. I think uh, at this game, I don't think it can be possible. But let's I have talk to about be honest the, the, with myself. The game itself now, it's a crucial game because Ghana yeah. want to make it back yeah. uh, to the World Cup. You've been there twice, 2010, yeah. 2014. Let me ask this before I get to the game against Nigeria. Mm. How does it feel like? To play in a World Cup, and you know that this is the World Cup, and I, Samuel Linkum, am playing at the World Cup. You've been there two occasions. How's that feeling like? It's a dream for every player. That is the highest level in terms of football. Mm. After World Cup, then Champions League. Okay. Then after Champions League, Europa League. Mm. You understand? And I've been there. You've played all? All. I've even played CONCACAF when I went to MLS. America. Okay. So... It's, a, it's a so excited when you are there. Mm. You meet a lot of great players to, to play with them, mm. to, show the, to show yourself to the world that this is what you can do. Mm. You know, so that is, the, that is the dream for every player, mm. to be there. To be at the World Cup. Yeah. And Ghana's game against Nigeria, crucial, because we need to win over the two legs to qualify. You saw Nigeria at the Nations Cup. Yeah. They were exciting the group matches, but mm. against Tunisia, they were knocked out. The Ghana, mm. poor, mm. at the Nations Cup. Mm. Is there really a chance for Ghana in this two double-header game against Nigeria to qualify for the World Cup? I would say a big yes. Ghana can qualify. I would say a big yes. Mm. Listen, Ghana against Nigeria, for me, I keep on saying it's not about who has form, who has quality players, who play good. Nigeria have great team. Mm. Even this tournament, they were favorite. Yeah. But what happened? Mm. That's football. Mm. So, but we have to respect them as well. Because if you play the first game in Ghana, you have to do it. Remember our game against Egypt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the World Cup in 2014 qualifier. Yeah. In we, Kumasi. In Kumasi, we did six, everything. 6-1. Six, six, one. One. We yeah. did everything. Mm. That is the game that the players have to show character. That is not the game about tactics, about game plan. It's about how you are strong mentally okay. and also they have to show character on the pitch. Okay. Be tactical, disciplined on the pitch. Okay. Both the players and we are behind. Mm. That will help the team to qualify. Because mm. why not? Two times, Ghana have not been in the World Cup. Yeah, if I'm we, not wrong. we missed out the last time Sata, in Russia. Uh, Russia, we yeah. missed it. We, could, we, we cannot afford to miss Qatar. Yeah. Look at how they are showing the stadiums. <laughs> that is the dream for every player yeah. to be there. Mm. Even those who are not playing football want to be there. So mm. I think that the advice I will give you to the players that they will call, also the coaches, they already know what they have to do and what this game is very important for, the, for, for Ghana. Mm. So I will not talk too much about that, but the players, they have to show character mm. on the pitch. Okay. Black Stars, I will leave Black Stars very soon, mm. but I, I really enjoyed the chat with you on the, mm. the Black Stars. Considering the, I'm current, ready for you today. No the current circumstances <laughs> our team finds itself in, vis-a-vis mm. -vis the players we have coming up, the players mm. we have in the team and all of that, mm. in the nearest future, say the next four years, the next five years or six years, mm. you are very experienced in the game. Mm. Do you foresee a Black Stars that like it was in your time, mm. we can be seen at the Nations Cup making us proud, at least semi-finals, finals, and possibly win what we've missed for all these as a Nations Cup. Do you really foresee this Black Stars team breaking that jinx of us not having won the Nations Cup in several years? Is it possible in the next four or five years? Of course, yes. You know, I believe in, I believe in uh, something that uh, to get experience, you have to play several games you cannot sit down and say i have experience hmm. you have to play more games to get adept in the game to understand the game very well hmm. so we have a, we don't have bad team we have a very good team but they have to get self-confidence hmm. they have to believe themselves that they can do it as for ghana there's no we love the game look let me give you this example okay we are playing for uh for money mm -hmm. because they pay bonuses mm. okay they pay pay them 
the fans, the Ghanaians, what they expect from us to, to win for them. So that they are also bonus. Mm. So imagine if the team is not winning, they will talk about it. Yeah. But if the team is winning, what we'll talk about, even if you, do, if you do some mistakes in the game, they will forget it because on the day, the team is winning. When we won down the 20, there was a lot of mistakes. There was a yeah. lot of misunderstanding yeah. in the, uh, our camp and this. But at the end of the day, we brought the trophy home. Mm. So even if you bring that, uh, that incident up, nobody will even have time nobody for you. Nobody cares about it. You understand? So what we have to do at the moment, uh, we have to show the character on the pitch. Okay. You know, so that is my... And also, the one thing I also want to tell them, football, young ones are very good. But football, you have to mix the young ones and the experienced ones. Okay. Because they the young ones have to learn from the experienced ones. Okay. Imagine if we have four or five experienced players in the team, even if they are not playing, they will motivate them, they will talk to them because they have been there before. Okay. And I, I thank God that now they have given to the, uh, the coach that he has also played the game before. Mm. Oh, to he understands the game before. So I think he will be the, the, the best position to psych the boys up. Also, the day you as a captain, he has mm. been there. Mm. He was there before I came. Okay. So I think um, uh, they, they, all, they, they have to help each other. Mm. Thomas Pate also have the experience as well. John, John, uh, Jonathan Mensah yeah. is still in the team. So that is the place that they have to push the players, mm. push the young ones. Let them know that we are playing for blasters, but not ourselves. Mm. We have to play as a team. Mm. That will bring the result. Uh, let's talk a bit about the names you mentioned mm. and, and all these wonderful names you are running to us about. The black stars, mm. the players, and all of that. Talking about the experienced ones yeah. and all of that, yeah. do you foresee the likelihood of mm. the coaches inviting possibly mm. any of the very experienced players who mm. are not part of the AFCON to this Nations Cup? Can that be, be feasible? Can that be done? Or should we do that? If they do that, I'll be glad. Mm. I'll be happy. Listen, if you check about good teams, country that they have good teams, let me use the same Nigeria we are going to play with mm. as an example. Mm. Musa, he's the captain. Mm. He played how many games in the Cup of Nations? He came on just about a game or two. He didn't game, play much. One game or yeah. two. How many minutes he played? Just a few minutes. A few minutes. But him being there is good for the young ones to learn. Mm. Because football, everybody can play. Yeah. But I'm telling you the truth. The experience is always important. Yes, when we went to South Africa at the World Cup, look at the squad we have. Apia was not even in the starting lineup, mm. but everybody knows what Apia can do mm. in terms of football. Yeah. He's a great leader. He knows how to talk to players. Mm. And he being there, even if you are doing something is no good, as soon as you see him alone, you will stop. That is personality. Okay. So that is what I'm saying. You still need some players to be in the team, not because he wants to play the whole game, no. So should, for instance, yeah. Coach Otoado and Chris Hilton mm. invite Sule Muntari, who yeah. is back playing active football yeah. in the Ghana Premier League. Mm. Should you consider calling Sule Muntari? I'll be so excited. I'm not the coach to tell what he has to do or to be in, in front of the whole 35 million Ghanaians mm. that call Sule Mutari. No, I will not be in the best position. Mm. But I'm saying that I will be excited if Sule, is, it, it, he will be in the team even against Nigeria. Okay. We don't, Sule have done it all. Mm. Him being in the team will motivate the team. Mm. If Musa is still in the team, what is wrong? Even uh, um, Yobo, he says like uh, he's one of the, yeah, the backroom staff in the technical there. team. Yeah. So if he's there, for me, I'll, I'll be so excited mm. for him uh, to be there. I'll leave the Black Stars chat in a minute, yeah. but endorse me a bit. Otto Ado, Chris Hilton, mm. Richard Ole Kingston, your mm. teammate. Yeah. These guys are the guys who are going to manage the Black Stars, clearly mm. from how things are going. 
what do you make of these persons and what they will bring to bear on the Black Stars? I think Otuado have been representing this nation before, so he know what Ghanaians are expecting from him now. As soon as he was in our, uh, when 2010, he was something, he was in the technical staff. Yeah. He would watch the game and come and tell how we have to play against mm. America. Mm. We have to be. So he know what Ghanaians are expecting from him. Okay. I will not be the right, the <laughs> right person to tell him. He mm. know. And um, Olele also, I don't know the word to describe Olele, Richard Kinsey, because everybody know what he can do. He has too much experience. Also, George Boateng, he has been the highest level yeah. in football, mm. and he, he's, I know him personally, you know, mm. and uh, he's, he's, I don't know the word I have to use, he's very disciplined. Yeah. So I think it will help, and the coach also, the, the, the Chris Hilton. It's also, uh, he has been in the game, he has so much experience, mm. he has been in premiership, yeah. and he understands the game very well. Mm. I'm not saying that because every, every, every person wants this, somebody wants this, somebody wants that. But at the moment, we don't need this. Okay. At this point in time, all we need to qualify to the World Cup, which is Qatar. Mm. So I just want to beg every Ghanaian that uh, we have to support the team at this point in time. Okay. That's the only thing I would say. Sami, do you believe in Juju and does it work in football? Yes, I, I think this, this, this <laughs> question, when I was in the, one of the TV stations, they asked this, and uh, I said that I'm a Christian. Mm. And uh, in this world, everybody has his own belief. Yeah. You cannot go into somebody what somebody believes. He believed that. When I was in Basel, I have one player that I always go room with. He has one, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know how to describe, it's like a toy. Okay. And, uh, He's always with him. Yes, he told me that uh, the grandma gave it to okay. him. Okay. So anytime we go to the pitch, he would just kiss it and put it down where the jersey, and he believed that he would score. Mm. Interesting. You understand? And I also take my Bible. One time when I took Bible, I was reading, he asked me, what are you reading? I said, can you pronounce this word, please? <laughs> and he said, Holy Bible. I said, yeah, that is what I also believe. So I believe that even when you pray, God help those who help themselves. Mm. When you pray, you have to also push yourself okay. so that God will give you the favor. Okay. So for Juju or no Juju, you as individual have to help yourself so that the, whoever you are worshiping will also help you. Has there ever been a key or a day or a case in the Black Stars where the issue of Juju for players like yourself came up in camp? I'm asking this because of that famous mm report of a former Black Stars coach, mm. Goran Stevanovic, yeah. uh, who came after Miloma Rajabach left in 2011, mm. 12 there about, mm. who said that there were incidents of black magic, as he called it mm. then, you know, in the Black Stars camp. Have you ever chanced on anything that you consider as the jewel of black magic in the Black Stars team and camp? I have to be very honest with you today. Uh, I've never seen this juju in the camp. Mm. And also we have, uh, every time when things are not going well, you will hear a lot of rumor. Mm. That's why I give example that under 20, when we went to Egypt, there was a lot of stuff was happening. Mm. But because we won the cup, nobody even talk about it. Mm. If we are winning, if we are, we are bringing what Ghanaians are waiting for to them, no single person will talk about Juju, okay. this and that. So I personally have not seen this in camp before since I joined Blasters. Only thing that we hear when uh, even sometimes my family will say, oh, they are talking about this, is that true, is that that? Then I will tell them that, listen, for me, anytime I'm there, I stay focused. Mm. Because you have to do everything. You have to show yourself, make the country proud as well. So... I've never seen this in the in Blasters camp. Let's talk about the Ghana Premier League. Samia, so, mean, coming back home, mm. you are in Ghana. I'll be asking you pretty soon if any of the clubs have shown some interest in getting you on because, you know, like I said, Samuel mm. Kum is in town. Mm. Sule Muntari has joined Accra to folk. Mm. I'm hearing news of Adebayo perhaps joining Kotoko. Mm. I'll be asking you later on if yeah. indeed you <laughs> go back to your former club Kotoko or if mm. Hatsu folk have given you a call that they need you in a team as well. I'll get to that. But 
Let's talk about the local league. Have you been monitoring since you came in the Ghana Premier League and how things are going? Your yes, team was up yes, on top. Yes, yes. I've been I've been following Ghana League for not when I'm here. Okay. Even when I'm outside, uh, I follow what is happening in my country mm. because I'm from here. And there's a saying that you cannot forget where you came from mm. or where you started from. So okay. I can never forget Ghana Premier League <laughs> because it's the league that made you who you are. Yes, today. Mm. So yeah. Uh, I think it's not bad. It's not bad. Let me put it that way. But we have to do extra. Okay. I keep on saying, if we are calling ourselves football nations, or football nation, we have a lot to do in our league. Hmm. I don't know the, 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 the sponsor which is sponsoring Ghana League. We don't have a current title sponsor okay. currently. So, so that's what I'm saying. Or a TV right holder who yeah. sponsors. That's what, so I'm TV saying that we need a lot. Because I believe that uh, even if a, a company or a sponsor will come on board, we have to convince him or convince the company that this is what you are coming to put money inside. And don't get me wrong, nobody will put money and get stoned. Yeah, they want a result. Of and course. Something in return. So we have to sell the league very well. We have to brand ourselves very well. If I'm not wrong, Ethiopia have, I think, maybe four or three stadiums. And if, it, uh, if Ethiopia League hmm. is doing well, Ethiopia, I don't know if they have been in the World Cup. They've not been there before. So what are we doing? Hmm. We need a lot to do. The last other day I heard an interview by a former Kotoko player who now plays in Ethiopia. Hmm. And he said that he earns more than five, six times what he was earning whilst he was playing for Kotoko in Ghana. I will not, in Ethiopia. I will not say... He's, he's, he's not telling the truth. I think he's telling the truth. Hmm. Why players go to such countries that, don't forget we also have family. Hmm. And the pressure back home will force you to go. Hmm. Listen, every, this job that you are doing, my brother, hmm. you are doing a great job. You deserve to be paid hmm. and paid very well. Hmm. You understand? Yeah. So every player wants to get good money come back home, take good care of his family. Mm. It will be sad when you are playing football and your mom, she's sick mm. and they will call you that they need money for hospital bills and you cannot afford. You understand mm. what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I get you. I so get you. every player go to where he can get the, the money to come and support, uh, uh, to bring it back home, to support mm. the family. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. If South, if South African players are not travel, how many tra uh, South African players are outside there? Mm. They, they cherish the country. The league is, there's a lot of uh, sponsorship in the league. The pay, the paycheck is very good. All of them stay in the league. Mm. So if we have good talent, good, uh, uh, how to say it, we have a good league, we have to convince the, the sponsors. Mm. That, that is why I was saying that you have to bring certain names in the league. Okay. There's a saying, they keep on saying that, oh, Ghana League, we don't have money. Who said Ghana, we don't have money? There's a lot of rich people in Ghana. Hmm. But we, don't, we are not convincing them to come to on board. Money in there. Okay. Look at, let me give this example hmm. about Sule. Okay. How many fans they go to Accra Sports Stadium to go and watch House of Folk now? Hmm. Or because of Sule. Or because of Sule. Hmm. Everybody have heard Ghana Lake. How many people go to the lake itself to the games to go and watch? Hmm. But when Sule came, I watched when they went to Tamale. Look. Atenas at the Tamale Stadium. Yes. And even alone, BB is talking about Ghana Lake now. Uh, what do you call it? The CNN was when Sule signed. You can see everywhere on social media. Hmm. That is the brand. Okay. That is the image you have. Mm. So we have to keep on. We have to spend the money. So it means you agree with the fact that uh, players who play their football in Europe, yeah. when they want to come back, it's yes. something we need to push, get them back into the Ghana yes, Premier League to, to help push the brand. Yes, we have, to, we have to accept them. You know, I heard one that they said when they come, some of them cannot play. Individual have individual, uh, how to say it? Differences. Differences. Mm. You understand? And uh, not because a, this one A or this one B couldn't play, 
So somebody cannot play. I will use Brazilians as an example because they make their country itself more special. Okay. You can be the same position with Brazilians in the team. They will pick him more than you. Mm. You know why? Mm. Because they have branded themselves very well. Okay. Not the one you are competing with. The likes of Ronaldo. That is the name that, they, oh, he's, he's, he's Brazilian. Mm. He have to play. They okay. have certain value. For them. For them. Okay. So I'm just saying that we have to bring certain, a lot of Ghanaians want to come. Mm. But, you know, the money itself. It's not good. The paycheck. The pay, and also the pitch, the our pitches. stadium. Okay. I keep on saying, I'm begging the, the leaders of the country. You know, I'm begging them. They have to help the league. I use Teki also as an example. You know what Techies they do? The, the teams there, the government itself is sponsoring the, 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 the clubs. Mm. They give them certain money and the clubs also will look for uh, sponsors okay. because some of the players' salary is big and maybe the government money cannot afford the, the, the big so, names okay. that they want to bring. Okay. So they also look for another sponsor okay. to come and also support okay. in terms of about the salary. Okay. So I'm just saying that if you bring, uh, if you bring certain players in the team or in the league, it will help. A lot of companies will come. The rich people will come because the rich people, what they want, they mm. want name. Yeah, the branding. Yes, I bring. I brought this one in the league. Okay. That alone for them, they are happy. Okay. If you bring MTN, for instance, you're not bringing MTN. And the reason I mention MTN is that if you bring a, 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 a player on board now and you go to MTN, that MTN, this is what we want, this is what blah, 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 we are bringing, he will see that the player will convince the company. Okay. Then they will bring more they bring money. money. They bring Samuel Leto, they bring Steve Napier in Turkish League. Why? The moment you bring set names, everybody will come to the stadium. Okay. And that will get, that is the team will get money from there. In wrapping up, Samuel Nkum, are you joining any Ghana Premier League team in Ghana? You know, when Have you, they called you? You know, when you are free, as soon as you finish your contract, a lot of clubs, not only Ghana, a lot of clubs will um, ask if you can come and help the team. And uh, I'm also a professional. And uh, I have agent as well, so I'm working with my agent. There was uh, a lot of uh, what do you call it offer offers from uh, Ghanaian league as well and outside as okay. well. And at at this point in time, I'm just I want to decide uh, very well. And uh, I'm also talking to my family to make the decision as well. Okay. So I I would love to play in Ghana, Ghana league. Again. I would love to play. Would you want to go back to Kotoko? And that's what I'm saying. I have to be professional. Kotoko is my last club that I played. Have they called you, Kotoko? Have they given you an offer? Uh, I would just say that uh, we were talking. Uh, I was talking to Nene Wamponsa, which was um, uh, last year. And um, it's all about what I'm saying. So certain things were not uh, in the place that uh, you wanted like you wanted them i wanted it and also for the i understand him as well because uh, every club have its own budget but uh, you know when you are when you want to bring a player that he has played the team before a player that the fans love you understand you have to do everything to bring the player okay. and i i will just uh, say this also has and kotoko at the moment, they are face of Ghana League at the, at the moment. Imagine when we go to couple, uh, uh, this, uh, how to call it? Uh, Champions League. Champions League. Look, the result sometimes happens. You know, I don't think it's good. Bringing some players also in uh, who has been there before, it will help the team. Okay. Because you, you take the league, give the fans so much, uh, what do you call it? Expectation will go high, and you go to Cup of uh, what do you call it, a Cup uh, Champions League, and you will not get the result you want. The same fans will just be yeah, down. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to work on it. Spend the money, bring the quality, and you get it back. I want a big answer to end it. As we are ending it, wrapping it up in here. Will Samuel Nkumbu join any team in the GPL if the offer is right? I will. 
You will. I will. Great chat with Samuel Inkum, who has been our uh, guest in here. On the, thank you very much, Samuel, for your time with us. You're welcome, my brother. You are doing an amazing job, my brother.